So this is the first video in a series of videos I'm going to be making about the prime counting function. Now it's a complicated function so it's good to get to grips with the basics before you try and move on to the more complicated stuff. So we're going to get to that a little bit later. Now the prime counting function is written like this pi of x equals n where n is the number of prime numbers up to and including the number x and that's all of your natural numbers. So I've drawn up a little table here of prime numbers. So just to show you a couple of examples first, and then I'm going to show you some sort of link with the natural logarithm. So for example here, the first five prime numbers on here are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. We all know that. So if I was to say to you, pi of 11, pi of 11, well obviously there's five prime numbers up to 11, so that equals 5. Now same here, if I did pi of 23, I could also do pi of any number up to 29. So for example here, I could go pi of 24. 24 is not a prime number. Now there's 25, now there's 26, now there's 27, now there's 28. So I could put 24 to 28, it would still chuck out the same answer. So I've got there nine prime numbers. So that's going to give me a nine. And then I've got pi, let's pick up to the next column. 41, so let's put 42 in there. So 42, that's then going to give me 13 prime numbers. And the same here, if I put some number, let's say 60, pi of 60, that's going to give me 17, because there's 17 prime numbers up to and including 60. So that's how the value of the input of pi function works. So this would be our x's and this one here would be our n's. Okay, now moving on from that, because that's pretty simple, I'm sure you can grasp that. The next thing we do is, how can we estimate that? Is there a function we can use to try and estimate what this value is going to be? Now, up to yet, there is no uh, function to give you the exact value. But there is a function we can use to try and find some sort of distribution of it will give me an approximation. So the function reads like this. Pi of x is approximately x over the natural log of x. So that's what it's approximate to. Now we know the natural logarithm as we're getting into high numbers or whatever. We know we're not going to get many whole numbers. So you can see there, fractions are going to occur, decimals are going to occur. So it's not going to give you the exact number, but it's hopefully going to give you some sort of a reasonable guide. So let's run that by on these ones and see what we get. So for example, here, if we plug in 11, we're going to get uh, pi of x is approximately, so I'll put approximate there for all of these. For this one, we're going to go 11 over the natural log of 11. This one will plug in 24 over the log of 24. Same for this one, 42. 42 over the log of 42. And this one, we'll put in 60. Okay, so these will give us approximate values of what we should be getting for this function here. So let's just type that into the calculator and see what we get. So 11 over the natural log of 11. So that gives me 4.59. So this function here gives me 4.59. Now I've got five here, so it's pretty much within 10%. So I'll put within 10%. This one here, 24 over log of 24. Let's put that one in. That's giving me 7.55. So this one, not quite as accurate. So that's 1.5 out. So that's something like 16% roughly of a, what we'll call an error value. Then we'll try 42 over the log of 42. Bearing in mind, this is the natural logarithm we're interested in. That's gonna give me 11.24. These numbers are all to two decimal places. So 11.24. Now we've got 13 here. So again, 
not too far out but not really very close either so 1.8 out from 13 so again it's a little bit less than 10 percent this time so we'll put less than 10 percent so that's a little bit closer and then the last one 60 over log uh, 60 that's giving me 60 divided by log of 60 that gives me 14.65 so that one there again it's just over two out so that one's just a little bit over 10 percent so that's over 10 percent uh, error value so that's what we get with these now what happens when we put in some big numbers will this approach something that's a lot more accurate so I've got some ones to show you so let's just take this off the board and then we'll have a look and find out okay so now I've drawn a little table here I've got pi of 10 to 100 so multiplied by 10 each time and then I've got our approximate value which is what we've used here x over log of x so in case here we've got 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, 100,000 so now let's see how close they are and interestingly to see how close this one here is 100,000 so pi of 10 we know from looking at our table that's going to be 4 there's 4 prime numbers up to the number 10 and then if we do 10 divided by the log of 10 we get approximately 4.3 so these should all be approximates Okay, so that's pretty close, that's within 10%. Now what happens up to 100? Well, there's 25 prime numbers up to 100. And then if you put in this calculation here, 100 divided by the natural log of 100, we get that something that's approximately 21.7. Again, that's pretty close, but it's further than 10% away this time. So that's moving away from how close we want to be. What about pi of 1000? How many prime numbers are there up to 1000? Well, there is 168 prime numbers up to 1000. And what does this approximation formula give us for the number of prime numbers up to 1000? Well, if we plug this into our calculator, we will get approximately 144.7. So again, it's going in the right direction, but we're still not on the 168. But it's, it's close. 10,000. How many prime numbers up to 10,000 are there? Well, if you do the, your research, I'd recommend uh, just plugging that into Wolfram Amphora or something. You'll get there's 1,229 prime numbers up to 10,000. So that's less than, sorry, more than one in 10 of the numbers are prime numbers here. So they're starting to thin and out. Here we've got one in every four. So again, we've gone from one in every four to almost one in every 11, or sorry, one in every nine or one in every 12 almost. Okay. Oh. So here we've gone up to 10,000. So there's, they're almost like one in every eight, for example, there approximately. Now, what does our approximation formula give us? So if we type that into our calculator, we'll get something that's approximately 1086 again that's moving in the right direction it's going with it uh, but it's not close enough really to 1229 for our formula to be working just yet now what about a hundred thousand well up to a hundred thousand there is nine thousand five hundred and ninety two prime numbers up to a hundred thousand so now they're getting even thinner now. So there's just less than every one in 10. But here is like almost one in every eight. So they're thinning it out here. So the gaps are probably increasing by quite a considerable amount. And then here, 100,000 divided by the log of 100,000. So our approximate value for that is going to give us something that's approximately 8,686. So again, this is getting closer now. So this one this time, is much closer to the 10% difference. So that's our error term for that. And then I'll leave it to you. You can try how many up to a billion, maybe up to a trillion, see how you get on. Okay.